Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Teaching English on Durus Ain Super Goal 4. Before we start, on your behalf, I would like to welcome Mr. Fawaz Al Agil, the interpreter to the sign language. As always, we start our class by reviewing the objectives, what we are planning to achieve at the end of the class. First, students will be able, by the end of the class, to take notes from voice, voice messages. Students will be able to use polite expressions when making requests using please. Students will be able to respond politely when someone does you a favor using thank you and thanks. Students will be able to refuse requests in a polite manner using I'm sorry or also using the expression but. Also, students will be able to write note to someone else asking for a favor. And at the end of the class, students will be able to identify the past and the past participle of five irregular verbs. Now we are still at unit six. Could you do me a favor? And our class today will be mainly on the ninth and the tenth sections, writing and project. Before we start our main class, let's make a quick revision on the previous lesson when we studied reading. In the previous lesson, we studied reading and we concentrated on the reading strategy, which is understanding the tone. When you read a text, you can uh, identify or recognize if uh, the, the uh, reading is formal or informal. How do you understand that? From something called the register. What's the register? The register is the expressions used and the tone used in this reading. Sometimes you can find contractions, you can uh, find some emotions, which is uh, uh, reflected in some expressions like dear, like love, that is uh, considered as informal writing. We applied that on a message that was written by a mother to her daughter. If you still remember from the previous lesson, she started saying, dear Farah, and she started to ask her daughter to do, to do her a favor. What is that favor? Lots of things, we read them in uh, uh, four or five notes, as you can see here. This is the first paragraph of the writing, and here is the second. She is giving her some instructions about the daily chores that Farah has to do instead of her mother. Here also is the third paragraph. She told her to wash her brother's uh, uh, clothes and also to iron her father's suit, as you can see here. And also she uh, asked her to help her brothers uh, studying the math uh, for the math exam. And also we answered some questions. We recognized that there was an emergency when uh, the grandmother fell down the stairs and she had a broken hip, okay? Also, we uh, asked you another question, what Hamid is going to do? And we, uh, we answered the question, he's going to drive his mother and his grandmother to the hospital. We answered the question number three, what does the mother want Farah to do? She wants her uh, to make dinner, wash Hamid's football uniform and iron her father's clothes. And in number four, also we answered the question, why can't Hamid wash his uniform by himself because he's taking his mother and his grandmother to the hospital and he doesn't have time to wash uh, his clothes and to, I to iron his uh, father's uh, suit. Number five, what should Farah's uh, younger brother and sister do? We answered the question, they should help Farah wash and they should also uh, do all their uh, homework and also help her to do some chores in the house. And also, we uh, studied five irregular verbs, if you still remember, that, uh, is, you can, that you can find on page 83. And we started with the first one, on, uh, that is number 46, the verb swim. And we told you that swim is in the present, in the past we use it as swam, and in the past participle we can use it as swam. And also take, the past is talk, and the past participle is taken. We had some examples also, teach, the past of teach is taught, and the past participle is taught as well. Think, the past of think is thought, and the past participle is thought as well. Throw, the past of throw is through, 
and the past participle is thrown. And today, now, we are going to start our main class, which is about writing. Okay, what are we going to study? We're going to study here how to report uh, messages. Okay, let's read the, the, the instructions here. Listen to Jason's messages from page 51 again. That is uh, the listening section. If you still remember, we studied some messages that were uh, uh, given by four of, of uh, Jason's uh, uh, friends. We need to write short notes for each message. Also, we need to include the necessary information. The first one is done uh, as an example for you. What are the necessary? Inf uh, what is the necessary information? The first one you have to to uh, tell who called. Okay. The first uh, uh, thing which is very important is to identify who. Okay. And the second one is about what. You answer the question what. The third one is when. Okay, so we'll apply it now on the messages that we had in the previous lesson, if you still remember. That is Jason, and Jason received some messages, uh, recording uh, voice messages on his phone. And we will start with Jim, that is Jim. The second one is Andy, if you still remember. And the third one is John, that is John. The third one is Charles, and that is Charles. We start with the first one, that is Jim, if you still remember. What did Jim uh, ask uh, his friend Jason to do? Uh, he said that he has some refreshments and he wants his uh, friend Jason to bring some snacks. This is the message that he has recorded. Let's listen again to this message and we will find out how to report this message to, uh, uh, to write it as uh, a note, okay? Let's listen. Jason, this is Jim. I've already bought some refreshments. Will you buy a few snacks and bring them tomorrow? Thanks. So he's asking his uh, friend now to uh, bring some snacks. This is the most important uh, piece of information. So we start, as we said, with who writing uh, Jim called. This is the shortest sentence. Now we are uh, uh, telling who called. That is Jim. So we say here, in the first sentence, Jim called. What does he want? He has bought some refreshments, okay? And also, he uh, wants uh, his uh, friend Jason to bring to buy some snacks uh, for tomorrow. Here, for tomorrow, we are answering when. Again, we answered who that we uh, decided that is Jim, the one who called. And what does he? What does Jim want? Jim wants his brother, his friend, to bring some snacks. When to bring the snacks? Tomorrow. So here we answered who, what, and when. The second one is Andy. What does Andy want his friend to do? If you remember now, uh, he told him to pick him up, and he told him the location of his house, and that is the message. Let's listen again to the message and to report it and write it uh, as a note, okay? Hi, Jason. This is Andy. Can you pick me up at my house at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning? My address is 27 Park Drive. It's easy to find. Just go south in Main Street. When you get to the lights, turn right onto 10th Avenue. Park Drive is the second street on the left. Mine's the blue house on the right-hand side. You can't miss it. Okay, so we start with who. We can tell that Andy called, that we answer who. He wants you to pick him up at 8 a.m. What does he want? He wants him to pick him up. And now we start uh, to tell the direction uh, that uh, Andy uh, recorded in the voice message. His address is 27 Park Drive. Go south on Main Street at the lights. Turn right onto the 10th Avenue. Then turn left onto the 2nd Street. It's the blue house on the right. Now we move to the third one, that is John. John recorded a voice message also, and he asked uh, his friend to bring the volleyball net, the, his brother's volleyball net. Let's read and listen to try to uh, report this uh, voice message and write it as a note, okay? Jason, this is John. I can't find my volleyball net. Could you please ask your brother to lend us his? Could you bring it with you tomorrow? Okay, we answer now the first question, who? We can tell that John called. 
This is the shortest, the shortest sentence, and it is very good to start the note with, to tell who called. So we can say here, John called. What does he want? He wants, uh, to, he wants you to bring your brother's volleyball uh, net tomorrow. So here, we, ha we answered who. The answer of who is John. What? That means what does he want him to bring? He wants him to bring the volleyball net. And when we can tell that uh, he wants him to bring the volleyball net tomorrow. Okay. Now we move to the third or to the fourth one. That's Charles. What does Charles want his uh, friend to bring? He wants him to bring the snorkeling, and he wants to, him to bring also flippers and the mask for diving. Let's read and listen to uh, the message of Charles, and then we will report it to uh, Jason. Jason, this is Charles. You have some extra snorkeling gear, right? Please bring another pair of flippers to the beach tomorrow. And would you bring an extra mask too? Mine is broken. Okay, now we will learn how to report this message. We can tell from the very beginning who called. We start with uh, Charles called. He, what does he want? He wants to bring the, another uh, pair of flippers and extra mask tomorrow. Again, we answered who. We said that uh, Charles is the one who called. What does he want? He wants uh, snorkeling, flippers, and mask. When does he want uh, him to bring uh, these th uh, three items? He wants, them, uh, he wants him to bring them with him tomorrow. Okay, now we study the uh, writing section, uh, the, the writing corner on your book, page 54. When you, whenever you want to ask for a favor, the title of this unit, if you still remember now, could you do me a favor? You have to be polite, okay, to uh, ask politely for uh, the thing that you need. That is a very good thing to do, and it is very important. So be polite when you ask someone for a, a favor, and uh, also you have to include please. Okay, look, look let's uh, read the example here. If you ask somebody to help you with, the, with your homework, for example, you can do like this. Could you please help me with the math homework this evening? And notice here where we pl place please. You can uh, place it as it is like this. Could you help? Could you please help me? And also you have another option to place it at the end of the sentence. Okay, again, could you please help me with the math homework this evening? Also, when, uh, if, if you cannot do the favor, if somebody asks you to do him or her a favor and you can't, what, what, what can you do? You, you have to uh, answer politely and apologize and explain why. Okay, for example, when somebody uh, uh, comes to you and said, please help me carry this or carry that, but you can't, you can apologize uh, politely. Like here, the answer for the previous uh, request, we can say, I'm sorry, but I'm busy tonight. And you, ha you give another alternative or another option, how about tomorrow? This is a very polite reply if you can't uh, give a favor or if you can't help. Number three, when someone does you a favor and now uh, you ask somebody to help you or to uh, give you a, to do you a favor and he does or she does that, you have to reply uh, politely. You should always say thank, thank you, or you can say thanks. Let's read the example here. When somebody uh, does this, this thing uh, to you, you say, Thank you so much for your help, or you can say thanks for your help. Okay. And now we move to exercise B here. Work with a partner. Take turns asking each other for a favor. Accept and refuse to do a favor. You can do that with your classmates or with a member of your family. And you you ask for a favor and wait for the reply and tell the other party to ask you for a favor. If you can't do it, you can say sure and you uh, tell how you will do it, or you, you have to apologize if you can't do it, and give another alternative, as we said. Use polite language, like please, I'm sorry, but, and thank you, or thanks. And, and see here, write a note in which you ask someone to do you a favor, explain why you need uh, the favor, use polite language and other ideas from this unit. You have to apply uh, what we studied about how to request for uh, a help or a favor, and how to reply uh, positively or uh, negatively. 
And now we move to the second section of our class today, which is about a project. In this project, you need to work with a group, your classmates uh, or your, uh, a member of your family or some members of your family and write down the most common favors people ask. Usually, you are uh, asking people to help you or you are asked to help other people. What are these favors that usually people uh, ask for? Okay, you need to think of them. You need to make a list of the things with your classmates or with a member of your family. Present your idea to the class. Think of these things and try to answer them. And the next class, we will tell you how or what these uh, uh, favors and what are the usual favors that were uh, people or that people were asking. Okay, now we go to the workbook, page uh, one, uh, 113, to answer some exercises. Here we have exercise E. You need to describe the situation in which people are making requests. We use want to. Here we have a conversation, as you can see here. Uh, Adil, this is the mother, is asking her uh, son, would you clean your room after dinner? Adil says, sure, mom. That means he is accepting or he is agreeing to do that. Now our role is to report this request. How can we uh, say uh, use this uh, using want to? We can say mom wants Adil to clean his room after dinner. We do the same here with uh, Nora and uh, her friend. Hey Nora, can you go to the mall with me this afternoon? She's asking her friend to go with her and she apologizes, she refuses the offer now saying, sorry, Ma, uh, Mona, I can't, okay? How can we report that? We can say Mona wants Nora to go to the mall with her this afternoon, okay? Also, we have another conversation that is between Hanan uh, and her friend. Hanan, uh, or the, this uh, friend is asking Hanan, could you help your sister with her homework? She says, not now, dad, I am busy. That's the dad asking his daughter, to help, uh, to, to help her sister, but she is uh, refusing and apologizing. We can report it like this. Dad wants Hanan to help her sister with her homework. Another conversation here uh, between uh, Ali and his father, and the father is asking, Ali, will you help me paint the house this weekend? And uh, the son, Ali, uh, accepting this offer or this request, he's saying certainly Dad, certainly here means sure, I will help you. We can report it like this. Dad wants Ali to help him paint the house this weekend. And now we move to another exercise from the workbook uh, that is uh, on page 113, exercise F. We have some scrambled sentences. We need to unscramble them, to rearrange them. Uh, okay, now here, unscramble the words to make sentences. Look at the, the sentence here which is uh, scrambled, we need to unscramble it. Ask to meet Yahya in the library. We can do like this, ask Yahya to meet, uh, to meet in the library. Number one, to the mall, your brother ask to drive you. We can use it like this, ask your brother to drive you to the mall. The next one, to stop, your father ask by the store on his way home. You can pause the video and think of it then play it again to get, to get uh, the model answer for this uh, sentence. Ask your father to stop by the store on his way home. Next, the children tell their voices to lower. Tell the children to lower their voices. Okay, number four, your English teacher ask about the summer course in London. We can use it like this. Ask your English teacher about the summer course in London. And the last one here, about the new museum, me tell. It is uh, only uh, three sections of this, uh, this scrambled sentence. We can say, tell, tell me about the new museum, okay? And now we move to exercise itch also in your workbook, uh, uh, page 113. Imagine that you are helping a friend plan graduation party. You imagine uh, a situation and you need to write a conversation between you and your friend. How can you help your friend? You can do that uh, in many different ways. And here we are going to show you uh, a sample of this answer. Uh, here, graduation plan. You, you will ask, I'll bring some 
soda juice that is uh, so, and, and juice that will uh, that is your offer to your uh, friends who has who's, who will have the graduation uh, party your friends uh, your friend might reply like this that's all right i already have some soda can you bring some pizza you can answer like this sure no problem what kind of pizzas do you want me to bring uh, he might answer like this i want you to bring uh, cheese pizzas you will uh, also reply okay i'll bring three cheese pizzas and your friend might say also thank you that will help a lot can you bring your camera uh, you will answer uh, positively saying sure and your friends will answer uh, at the end of this conversation saying i want to take a lot of pictures of us and our friends and now we move to the last part of our class today which is about the irregular verbs you can find this irregular verbs on page 83 you will have 54 verbs you need to know what the past of the uh, form of the verb and what the past participle of the verb is here that we start with the first one wake up we can use it in the present as wake up in the past you can use it in a different way you can use it as walk up and in the past participle as walking up let's write uh, or let's have three sentences in uh, uh, three different tenses the first one you can say if you wake up early you can say i wake up early that is a habit you do but when you talk about something in the past like yesterday two days ago last week and so on you can say i woke up early you just change the form of the verb and by changing the form of the verb you change the tense the time of the sentence and if you use it in the past participle form you use it in the present perfect like this one i, ha I have wake woken up early in this case here you don't care about time you care more about the action you say i have woken up early and here we talk about the uniform that uh, some uh, soldiers wear we we use the verb wear we use it in the past wo as worn and in the past participle as worn in the present we can use it like this they wear uniforms at school okay if it is a uh, dress for school uh, so some schools have special uniforms and soldiers also uh, wear uniforms and also there are different uh, kinds of uniforms you can say they wear uniforms at school you can say they wore uniforms at school when you talk about something in the past and if you talk about the action uh, regardless of the time you say they have worn uniforms at school and here this guy is winning a race and the verb here win the past of win is won and the past participle is won how can we use it in three sentences we can say he wins the race if it is if it happens regularly you can say he wins the race but if it is if it happened in the past we can say we just change the form of the verb we say he won the race talking about something happened yesterday uh, or any time in the past he won the race and in the past participle when we talk about the action it is completed okay we can use it in the present perfect uh, he has won the race and number four here we use uh, the verb write and the past wrote and the past participle we use it as uh, written okay we can say here uh, they write uh, he writes or they write the writer writes a story if it happened in the past we can say the writer wrote a story and if he has finished writing and we talk about the action we can say the writer has written a story okay and by this we come to the end of our class today thank you for watching and see you inshallah in our next episode goodbye